Brandon's here today, and we're going to be talking about thoracic mobility, specifically thoracic rotation, and why the thoracic rotation exercise is actually super versatile. So, Brandon, go ahead and get in position here, and I want to talk through a few things pertaining to thoracic rotation. Number one, thoracic rotation, probably not that important for you strength athletes. For you guys who are spending most of your time in a sagittal plane and you're not doing much twisting, you don't need much of it, but you do need a little bit of it. So even if you are a power lifter or a strength athlete of sorts, you should still be pretty good at this exercise. So the first thing that we're going to get Brandon to do is to press hard into his post hand. That's super, super important. I see a lot of people who like to ball up a fist here and get really tight, but the reason we press through the ground is so that we can actually activate a lot of our support supportive shoulder girdle musculature, talking about the serratus, talking about the upper and lower traps, and potentially even lats and pec, depending on the position that we're in. So really, really important that Brandon pushes as hard as he can through the ground on that offhand. His other hand's gonna go right behind his head to act as kind of like an anchor for the total position. Now he's going to rotate up as high as he can. What we would have Brandon do now is get to a high point, and depending on what we want to do with this drill, we are either going to try and increase this range, like this is plenty of rotation for any strength athlete. If you had poor rotation, go ahead and go down, it would probably look kind of like this. Go ahead and look at your elbow too, Brandon. I like cueing looking at the elbow here, so if your rotation was really poor, that would be about it. Go ahead and go up to the top. If uh, you're someone who's doing this drill, it's best to do it in a contract, relaxed format. So he's gonna hold for like a five to an eight count and he's going to relax for about the same amount of time. Go ahead and get back into that position here, Brandon. Top position. The other thing that I would do with this drill, even if you're not targeting thoracic mobility, is to actually treat it like a breathing drill and focus on oblique expansion. So instead of just maxing out how high you can get, we're going to go just below that. So if like up here was as high as Brandon could get, we're going to get him to go about here and I'm going to get him to focus on breathing horizontally through all of this musculature. This is going to be really beneficial for your oblique expansion, which is something a lot of people struggle with. It's also going to be very useful for expanding your rib cage in your intercostal musculature, which for a lot of people is really, really tight. This is also a fantastic left to right shoulder um, assessment or a self-assessment. It's very easy to see if you have dysfunction. Go and shift arms here, Brandon. Go and go to the other side. So if Brandon like really struggled left to right, we would see one side's really, really high, one side's really, really low. So if you're not really sure what your issues are with like your shoulder pain or pec pain, this is an excellent self-assessment because you uh, don't need a ton of it, but you do need equal proportions left to right. Now, if you are a thrower or a boxer or somebody who twists a lot, you should uh, aim to have much more thoracic rotation than we just described with Brandon. Brandon, go and pop up here. Let's go over to the skeleton there, Ron. So what we're talking about here, our skeleton's not very mobile, probably because he doesn't have any connective tissue. <laughs> yeah, we made Brandon laugh at that one, and it wasn't actually that funny. What we're talking about with those intercostals, though, is all of the connective tissue between these ribs. Our skeleton doesn't have any, but each of your ribs is going to have a big layer of connective tissue here. And if you are a bad breather, someone who takes very shallow breaths, or a chest breather, you are going to have musculature that keeps these ribs really pinned down. And your rib cage is designed to expand and contract. And if these muscles are really, really tight, it is going to inhibit how well you can brace and how much intra-abdominal pressure you can create. And that's why we would treat that drill as a breathing drill uh, for our strength athletes. Brandon, how'd that drill feel? Very challenging. Uh, one thing I have to ask, we forgot to mention it, is that we want to make sure we are bracing very, very hard and none of that um, that, that twisting motion is happening at the lumbar spine. Bracing can make sure that or make it less likely that that is occurring. So make sure we're staying braced um, and of course breathing into it so we can get those benefits. Brandon, Brandon, out. 